Starling Gate, I'm from Esquimalt Nation. Esquimalt Nation and Songhees Nation were the original people of Victoria. I committed to be an art, to becoming an artist when I was about 10 years old. And so it's been 30 years of um, learning, and I'm still learning. I had to do other jobs along the way to support my art career when it was really hard, like in my 20s. Mm -hmm. um, so I took illustration and I took uh, graphic design and I studied animation and really got into understanding computers and, mm -hmm. um, and I used that to support myself and my family so that I could pursue my art career, which I'm kind of grateful that I did. I never stopped painting. I always... I was the mom that would put the kids to bed and paint till three and get up at seven and send them to school and sleep a few hours and do the same thing all over again the next day. So there was always a strong discipline of, um, of art in my soul and, and it really is what I am supposed to be, I guess. But it, there's a lot of practice and a lot of, just like anything, if you decide you're going to do it, you got to commit 100% to it. So. It's, it's very different to be a native Baha'i, I would say, because the culture is, um, just because I'm cultural doesn't mean I'm spiritual. And uh, I need to have that other half filled before I feel any kind of balance. So there is, it's every day I'm affected by my beliefs because prayer is a big part of my morning ritual and so is smudging, that's culture. So it's a combination of the two of them put together and it actually helps me to produce stronger, more connected work. And I'm able to um, to really get a feel of, of what is important, the important message that I'm trying to say through my art when I'm balanced. So I have to have the two of those things in order to do what I do. There's no room for shyness in the faith, especially if you're Native woman. Okay. I had to take singing lessons in order to be, do public speaking because I couldn't do public speaking. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? I couldn't even speak to a couple of people, let alone in a room full of non-native people. Mm -hmm. That was hard for me to be able to interact with non-native people. Mm -hmm. I struggled with that for many years. And then all of a sudden being a Pai, there's no more room for that anymore. You have to overcome it. Mm -hmm. And it forces you to overcome it. Mm -hmm. And it really forces you to face all your fears. And that's a really interesting thing. <laughs> So I guess you just walk away, if anything, with a whole lot of confidence, you know, and there is nothing more appealing than seeing a Native woman walk through a door with no hang-ups. Yeah. People just get out of the way. My art changed. It went from being political to being spiritual. I was very political in some of the images that I was painting before I was Baha'i. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of healing taking place. I'd show images of people and um, I would almost force people to look within themselves to feel ashamed of what they did to our people. That's what my paintings were mm -hmm. saying. So only a select audience liked my <laughs> art. White people didn't like it. So, sorry, non-native people didn't yeah. like my art because yeah. it made them feel guilty. And I, I realized after declaring that that was the wrong way to send a message out there. And when I started to heal, my art changed too, and it became loved by all. And there is a power in that, you know, mm -hmm. in having people understand that it's not just... You don't have to make people feel ashamed of what they've done mm -hmm. in the past to our nation to heal. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do it that way. Mm -hmm. There's a better way, a more loving way, and I'm learning that way. And although it's it was a slow process, um, my art was a good... I don't know, thermometer of where I was at spiritually and now I'm doing images that I create through visions and um, it's not even for me anymore, I just do it for the world. You know, I've gone from painting for myself to painting for something bigger and I'm okay with that. Uh, the mural in Victoria, which is the the land and sea mural for the harbor and we just finished hiring our youth. The youth that were selected are seven to, between 17 and 22, I think 20 to 24, mm -hmm. 25 is the oldest. And uh, most of them are all 17 though. They're all just finishing high school or in grade 11. And um, all of them brought their portfolios in and they laid them all down for us to see. Yeah. And we went through all of them and it was really hard selecting this year because so many applied. Mm -hmm so much talent came through. Our 
for five are First Nation and one is non-native. And uh, I think it's important to involve non-native people to allow them to understand and learn. because they're very, there's a lot of ignorance and it, the elimination of ignorance starts with the youth. Mm -hmm. So if you can teach a child or a youth to understand a culture, then when they go to school there's no, there's no issues with racism because they understand. You don't teach them then they're just going to be ignorant, you know, and I think it, it starts from uh, at home. When mm -hmm. the parents understand then it's the same thing. So we're trying our best to find a way to show that it's possible for two different cultures to come together. And this is our, our way of showing the world also that we can work with another nation, which is uh, Songhees Nation. We were at one time one nation and we split apart. And now there's, uh, there's not a, there's, uh, um, it's difficult because we don't see each other as one nation anymore. We see us, each other as two separate nations. And there's tension, but when the youth are working together, all the elders realize the importance of um, the wisdom in this, because they, they realize there's no room for, for old uh, grudges and how damaging those grudges are to the people. Mm -hmm. um, they're learning from the youth, mm -hmm. and this is our second year, and uh, the kids are just amazing. They're so talented. and. They're producing a, a mural this year. This mural is very complex, and it does have our language on the wall. And uh, uh, many of the First Nations people see this blessing from Mahalala as a prophecy. So I'm kind of blown away at that, because I never expected that. And um, we'll see why, because the unveiling is in September, okay. so some of the elders are going to be explaining what this writing from Mahalala means to our nation. Be hearing from two or three different elders in September speaking about it, so I'm looking forward to it. What is the blessing called? The blessing is called Blessed is the Spot. It's a writing from Paola, and it basically is blessing. It says, Blessed is the spot in the house and the land. The valley and the city and the cave and the refuge. I don't know the whole prayer, I'm just remembering little bits and pieces from it, but it's, it's basically when you're looking at the mural, you're seeing all of those things in the mural from a First Nations point of view. It's a, it's a mixture of Butch Dick's art, who is focusing on the 13 grandmothers. I'm not sure if you're aware of that, mm -hmm. but it's, um, I'm not going to speak on his behalf, but I will say that, that the two coinciding, the two ideas coming together are very powerful. Mm -hmm. And you can almost feel a transformation in the air taking place. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, and I don't know what's going to happen, but I can feel it in my heart, and I can feel it in the back of my... I don't know. As a First Nation, <laughs> yeah. I can just feel it. Yeah, it's a shift. It's, it's a, a shift. It's a actually, this year we're actually putting the text of our of our traditional language on the wall, so the whole world will see a 400 foot big prayer <laughs> down in Algonquin. So it's okay. gonna be pretty cool.
little swirl before our eyes Colors all out of the sky And just at the barbecue the other day we were having our celebration to unveil the, the design and it was, it was interesting to see how people responded to the design. They're just saying, it's just so open and lively and there's dance, there's culture, there's um, history. It's just all of those things all, to, all coming together and it speaks so proudly of our people. Most of my paintings come from dreams, but this piece was uh, very, you know, like some things in life, the really difficult stuff is hard. And this was hard. It was very, very hard. Um, I came up with an image, and Butch didn't feel that it was a, uh, an image that he could work with, so we both had to come up with different images. And finally, I just humbled myself, and I said, okay, do what you need, give it to me, and I'll put it into my design, and we'll make it work. And it took us a while, and we finally got it. <laughs> But it was hard. It's really hard working with yeah. another artist. He yeah. had a very difficult life since he was born. Mm -hmm. And he's now 16 or 17. And last year he was one of the painters. And uh, it was a very, he was in a gang. You know, mm -hmm. He's gone through a lot of transition and his, a lot of bad stuff has happened to him. But you look at him today after painting that mural. Mm -hmm. He's working full time. He's taking care of himself. He's mm -hmm. no longer involved in drugs and alcohol or gangs. He's like flipped right around and you just watch this taking place. Just this little bit of teachings, this little bit of spiritual teachings, mm -hmm. what it can do to a community of Native people just mm -hmm. blows me away. Just a drop. Imagine a bucket of it. Right. Just a drop can do that. Mm -hmm. Imagine what our people can do with a whole bucket. Imagine a whole community. You know, what that, what will happen. That's my, in my heart. I want to see that happen before I pass away and go into the next one. Because mm -hmm. then at least I know that I've left something that's good for our people. I have a gallery and it's on the reserve in Esquimalt. It's right across from the big house on my reserve. And it's called One Moon Gallery. Um, it's been there for about four years, coming on five years now, four and a half years. My father built it before he passed away. It was his last thing that he wanted to really do and give back to the community. Is this gallery that has these enlightening pieces hanging in there. For people to go in and this is what he thought anyways he thought my work was um, healing just to look at because he's seen the transition that i was going through he passed away a year and a half ago so he's seen me become a baha'i and he's seen me go through transition and i'm grateful for that but there is over 120 pieces in there for people to go look at and i also have a website you can go online and check it out too gonna go out to that spot on a Friday oh hell will be gone dinner with rice instead of me as the night of come out to the sea but only heart says go south home and I sleep Says go and let the time come in fast. Feel at home, yeah. Feel at home. Feel at home, yeah. Feel at Little swirl before our eyes in the car.